Welcome back, everyone. I'm Keith Urban, and we're already up to day five. Can you believe it? In our 30 Songs in 30 Days lesson series. Now, today we're going to tackle one of my favorite songs to play in concert. It's called Good Thing. This song's a lot of fun because it has a very cool intro riff and a bunch of texture. Lots of starts and stops that drive my band bonkers when I play it live. Playing guitar is so much fun because you're not stuck with just strumming chords. There's all sorts of great techniques you can use to add fun to the sound. We're quickly going to review three basic fingering techniques that are going to come up again and again. The hammer-on, the pull-off, and the bend. First, the hammer-on. The hammer-on is a technique to get sound out of the guitar without actually strumming or plucking the string. And basically it's achieved by literally hammering on the string with your finger, as in... You're not plucking with this hand in any way. You're literally just hitting by hammering your finger on the string. It creates a vibration and sound, of course. So if you have a, if you're playing this here, this note, this would be hammering on, plucking, hammering. When you put them together, it's like this. It sounds like I'm plucking the string twice, but I'm only hitting it once, and I'm hammering on. This technique's really cool because you can get seemingly fast uh, patterns, but not hitting it very much, as in... I'm only plucking like that. And then hammering. So that's a hammer. Next is the pull-off. It's a bit of a reverse of the hammer-on. If this is your hammer-on, a pull-off is this. There's the note, and here's the pull-off. So you're not plucking it with this hand again. It's so hammer-on, and pull-off. Hammer-on, pull-off. When you put them together, the last thing we're going to talk about is the bending of the string. Now, if your guitar is in tune, pressing down on a string should give you a note, for example. However, you can manipulate the sound of the note by pressing the string up with the tip of your finger, like this. That's called bending, obviously. This tightens the string and makes the pitch of the string higher. Now, you can bend up that way, or you can bend down towards the ground. It does the same thing because it's tightening the string. And it really depends on where you are on the guitar and what you're playing and which finger you're using. That will depend whether you bend this way or bend this way down or up. I bend both ways. Most guitarists, I think, do. These moves are going to pop up when you're playing chords and when we're playing riffs and solos as well. So they're great to learn and practice now. Now, if you listen to the album, we start a good thing with a run of notes going from high to low. A little bit like this. These notes come from what is known as the pentatonic scale. Even though you don't know it, I bet you're familiar with a traditional eight note major scale. If that reminds you of something, as in do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, well it should because that's also a traditional eight note major scale. Now the pentatonic scale is a bit simpler. Like its name, pentatonic means five notes. It's basically the same as the eight note major scale we just leave some of the notes out. Which is the intro to Good Thing. I just play it on the harmonics, which is like this. <laughs> there you go. Okay, there's a pattern here, which is a great way to remember this. Starting on the 12th fret of your 6th string and working up. 
which is one, four, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, four, one. And what's cool about that is you can play it starting on any fret. We just did it starting on the 12th fret, but we can do it on the 5th fret if we want. Or the 9th. Or the 0 fret. This scale is great because it's pretty simple and it can be used as the basis for a guitar solo. Just play the notes in a different order and at different times. To play around, learn the 1 4 1 3 1 3 1 3 1 4 1 4 pattern and see what you can do. Good thing uses similar chord progressions for the verse and the chorus. More importantly, it has a great pre intro and intro riff. So let's hit them. really slow to start with and again on the record it's harmonics meaning we'll play using our fingers very slow starting from here reverse pentatonic Now again, the intro riff of the song can be played a few different ways, a very simple version of it and one with more um, bends and a few little nuanced things. Now the way I play it, I've been using my pinky like this, so I'll play it for you one time the way I do it live. Basically, that's what I do live. We can do a much more simple, slowed down version of that, where we're simply using more of a... Um, if you can get that started, that's the very opening piece of it. Bending this string. There's a bit of that pentatonic again. So. Then. Okay, if you're not comfortable bending the string, as in. You can even just play that note. So you can go dun 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 and then here you might want to do dun 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 like that. So dun 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 If you want to do the, <laughs> you can play that, and then you can go either, or, what I find helps a lot is to hum the riff, it's in, and then find where those notes are. I mean, that sounds maybe a little too overly simplistic, but that's really how I learned. Because if you get into thinking about fingers and where the fingers go and the strings and this, it's like oof, too much stuff, you know? So you might find your own way of playing. You 
点嚟嘅。You'll find maybe an easy way to play it, but if you know the riff and you can hum it, then you might be able to find where it works on the guitar for your fingers. The rest of the song you can do no problem. The key is in the rhythm. The first time through each verse, we use three chords: four counts on E, four counts on D, four counts on A, and four counts back on E. So if you were singing, it would be just hold it now. Let me put my drink down. Baby, tell me, are you really for real? Swinging side to side, doing that electric slide, spinning on your pretty little cargo boot heel. You get the gist of the verse starting to open up. The last time we cycle through this progression, right before the chorus, we'll be doing four counts on E, four counts on D. We get to the A, but this time. We double that up. We do eight counts on A. The reason for that is that it builds tension, so that when the chorus hits, cause I know a good thing, it's got a good release to it. That's why we do that. For the chorus, we'll start with the same progression as our verses. So four counts on E, four counts on D, four counts on A. Counts on D. Real simple. Then we close out with a slightly different progression. Four counts on E. Four counts on G. Four counts on A. And then we do at the end of the chorus what we did at the verse, which is hold that A just a little bit longer. An extra four counts, which builds a little tension. And then we release by going back into the intro, and there we are doing the intro again after that first chorus. That's called a turnaround. It's another way to put it. It's the turnaround. It's the bit that we turn around before we get to the second verse. That's it. That's the song. Take your time and think about the song in chunks. First, the pre-intro. And intro, next the verse, next the chorus, next the intro riff again, next another verse, then a chorus, and last you have the intro as the outro, meaning that riff that dun dun ba da bam ba dun dun that is the outro of the song. So let's walk through it. We start with the pentatonic intro, which again is is that one, but you could play. Then you get into the riff, which can be. And then verse. E two three four. D two three four. A two three four. Two three. That's it. And then the last cycle of that is. Which is D two three four D two three four A two three back to the E two three and then E two to the G A hold it hold it hold it hold it back to the intro which is that. Second verse, another chorus, and then the outro is that intro riff again. So that riff is how we go out playing the song, and we finish with in the last bit. And then you 
go, ta-da, and you take a bow and run off stage. Hey, y'all, this is good thing. <laughs> one, two, four, two, three, four. Just hold me now, let me put my dream down Baby, tell me, are you really for real? Swinging side to side, doing that electric slide Spinning on your pretty little cowgirl blue heels And you're all alone, and that ain't right You see, a girl like you should have the best of everything like some wine to treat you right But I wouldn't give to hold you close Longer than tonight Cause I know a good thing when I see it You got something that I ain't seen before Yeah, I know a sweet dream when I'm dreaming They're killing me Like you're killing every dude in the room with the way you move <laughs> You ain't slowing down My head's spinning round But this neon bus keeps getting me up And I wanna get down with you Cause I know a good thing when I see it Great job, guys. Keep it up. I know I could.